There's a criticism of the new film Mary Poppins Returns, that its songs are not memorable, but in fact they've been going round and round in my head. You know, what, what's that line? Uh, so when troubles are incessant, simply be more incandescent. Uh, and then, um, oh, the great little rap, just as the final line of that song, uh, Trip the Light Fantastic, um, went to the bank, rattle and clank, met the boss, pitch and toss, got lost in the fog, lump on a log, trip a little light fantastic with me. Um, Great. Uh, I, you know, I think um, I, I, I think there's a lot of potential in that film, and as Angela Lansbury would say, um, or says in that film, there's nowhere to go but up, um, and um, splendid. Uh, but the film is trying to recreate something which was groundbreaking in 1964. Mary Poppins is up there with Battleship Potemkin as one of the films that changes the way we make films today. Um, in, in Mary Poppins' case, there's three major ingredients in that Disney film um, which changed filmmaking. The first is the use of animatronics. Um, the, the little Robin, for example, that Julie Andrews sings to, and the, and, and, and the top of her umbrella. These are both uh, audio animatronics, so they're controlled by the sound of noise. Um, and then there's, uh, uh, then there's the mat work by a, a tremendous um, British uh, painter uh, called Peter Ellenson, uh, called Peter Ellenshaw, uh, who died in 2007, actually. But I, his work goes back to Quo Vadis and the great Powell and Pressburger films I was talking about last time, um, Matter of Life and Death. Um, then Red Shoes, Black Narcissus, you remember the major, amazing scene uh, with the nuns standing on the edge of the cliff, all that is mat work. And then he was still doing uh, the same sort of mat work in the 1990s with Dick Tracy. Um, and then there's a third uh, feature, which is the um, travelling mat, the sodium vapour process. Now, the sodium vapour process comes from the street lights. Um, that extraordinarily yellow light that we used to have, um, it's a particular hue of light and uh, it emits a particular wavelength, which I think is 589 nanometers um, or something. Uh, it, but uh, there was a man, um, his name was Petro Vlachos, who uh, realized that the old blue screen uh, trick, which was invented for um, a film called um, Oh Arabian Nights or something. Well, what was it? I I forget. A Thief of Baghdad. Um, and uh, this man was Lawrence Butler. He invented the old blue screen trick, uh, which is now probably called chroma key, uh, for 1940. And it required very careful lighting. And of course, the actors were not able to wear anything blue because if they did they will become invisible. Blue screen behind anything you wear that's blue simply disappears. Today we use a green screen, so um, if, um, if we're standing in front of a green screen and we wear something green, that disappears. And this was a problem that Petro Vlachos solved with the sodium vapour process. Because sodium vapour has this very specific hue, this very specific wavelength, um, the actors were able to wear almost any colour. Now, he knew that this wavelength uh, would not interfere with the Technicolor system, with the red, um, blue and green Technicolor hues. What he did was to take an old, old Technicolor camera. Now, the old Technicolor cameras before 1954, when they were replaced by uh, a process called Eastman Colour, uh, which produced um, a single colour negative, but the old, the old film cameras had three black and white negatives which each, uh, when they were um, processed, would produce um, a, uh, a, 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 a version of the film in one specific hue. So the red strip, the blue strip, the green strip, and they were combined. So what he took was this, th was this three strip camera and turned it into a two strip camera with the Eastman uh, colour negative on the one side and the black and white negative on the other. He then invented a prism um, which bent the light so that uh, although the sodium 
uh, vapor lights would not register on the red, blue and green film, they would register very well um, on black and white film and produce a perfect silhouette. Now, this gives us three advantages over anything that existed before and actually really over almost anything that has existed since. One, it preserved all clothes colours. So Dick Van Dyke could wear a bright orange um, jacket. Uh, Julie Andrews could wear um, a, uh, an incredibly um, fine lace scarf in the, uh, in, in the Jolly Holiday number. There was no degeneration of image because the process of going from um, the photography to the mat, to that silhouette, was in camera. Uh, and more than that, num number three, it produced amazing accuracy. Uh, so good was this camera uh, that it was used by many other people. Now, unfortunately, Vlachos was only able to produce one prism that did this, uh, that did this conversion of the trick in the middle of the camera. So there was only one camera, but it was used by Hitchcock in The Birds, it was used by Ray Harryhausen in Mysterious Island, and then, of course, it was used in all those Disney films, Island at the Top of the World, Pete's Dragon, What on Earth Do You Want? Um, Pete's Dragon, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Dick Tracy, I Have a Screaming Cat. Uh, now, um, today, we've got a hundred animators, a hundred animators um, led by Jim Capobianco, um, integrating their animation into a system where the, where, where the camera can move, a little bit like Roger Rabbit. So it means that the animators were drawing in 3D. Uh, and I think it's quite interesting, the first shot uh, that Rob Marshall filmed was the scene where um, Mary Poppins gets the hummingbirds on her finger uh, when she's singing about going to the Royal Dalton Music Hall. Um, this was a test, and it's paralleled by the same sort of test that was done at the beginning of the Jolly Holiday with Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. Um, I, I also think it's rather entertaining that you can't sort of, uh, if you go back to Bedknobs and Broomsticks, that great joke about taking the star of Astaroth out of one world in another, you can't. So, uh, super supercalifragilistic expialidocious really is a souvenir um, from the fantasy, uh, an intangible souvenir from the fantasy. Anyway, those are my thoughts about Mary Poppins um, for today. And, uh, and, and, and we'll try and do something else in the next few days. Uh, for now, this is Tim. I have to go and feed a cat. <laughs>